Jeff Santos Show. Thirty-three minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. We're here every Monday through Friday from two o'clock to three o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. That is eleven to twelve on the West Coast, and that is, of course, where we find our next guest. He is the Renaissance Man of the Jeff Santos Show. Been with us for over a decade. He is uh, not only a fantastic musician, he is an activist, uh, been involved in a number of protests on the right side of things, and always peaceful, as we talk about. And, of course, he is a uh, fantastic journalist uh, covering the Seattle scene for Democracy Watch News as their executive director, and, of course, as a uh, regular contributor to the Jeff Santos Show. We haven't heard from him in a while because we've been off for a little bit, Uh, so it's great to have him back. Here he is, guitar in hand, uh, MTC in the house. That's to Jimmy. All right, all right. Yeah, we had a big show at our podcast. There was a big, uh, yeah, a big portrait of Jimmy behind the stage. But, uh, man, it's been a crazy week. I've been doing, like, webinars and seminars with Tony Robbins and Ari Herstan, a writer, a music writer. Her, her, you can, Ari too, is, can be a great person. Yeah, Ari Herstead is great too. He works with a lot of indie artists. He has a blog called The New Music Industry, uh, New Music Business. And he's a writer for Variety now, so he's doing quite good. He has his own band and stuff out there. And then Jack Canfield, my apparently my shirt tail uh, relative, who's a best selling author, also had a little thing on you know how to get your book published. So uh, luckily, I didn't have to pay for all of these because this stuff can get kind of expensive, but it's been a crazy week. But I want to. I wanted to say hi to the people in your neck of the woods. Very cool. A Why Boston Cup. Well, I, I would raise one. But the only thing I have is just a, a glass here. But uh, to you, my friend, as always. Um, to Boston, and all I got was a stupid. <laughs> a stupid uh, cup. Well, you know, you could do worse. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I can take a, f- a photograph of it, Josh. We do have a frozen, um, for those of you who are listening to us uh, on, on WCAP, there was uh, a, a little glitch with our friend uh, MTC there in Seattle. Oh, he's back live now. We're back. Uh, again, it's for those live. of you who are listening on radio, here you go. You're li- you can go to uh, the uh, uh, great platforms of uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitch. Twitter, now X, and of course, uh, LinkedIn, and you can check out Mark Taylor Canfield. He is dressed to the nines today, and he's got some kind of press credential, too. So sorry, Republicans, you can't keep me out. I'm an official member of the press. You know, you'll have to talk to my editor. (laughs) Hey, by the way, I love that. I love love that that base back there. How long have you had that one? Behind your left shoulder. Are Are you talking about the yeah, the cello. Yeah, that's a cello. Uh, it's it's actually a modified cello, for folks who know what that means. But, oh, man, I love that mm-hmm. instrument. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, unfortunately, we have this great music store in Seattle. It's an icon to the whole music world. And everybody from Eddie Vedder to, you know, the famous producer Jack and Dino has gotten stuff there. It's called the Trading Musician. And that's where I got this. It, it It's an amazing, um, in, no, that side, right? It's an amazing instrument. Uh, I'm backwards on my screen, so it gets confusing. It's like looking yeah, at yeah. your. It's, 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 it's your left to us, but yes. Yes, the trading musician, stage left, stage right. Yeah, the trading musician uh, is unfortunately being sold, and it's one of the greatest music stores in the world. It's like a curiosity shop, vintage instrument museum, and clubhouse for musicians at the same time, because we all, we all like to go there and hang out together, form That's new where you bands. you spend all your savings, right? And that, that is that music store. Every right? penny either goes to, yeah, the producer or yeah. the music. But I'm more than glad to give it to them because what they give me are these beautiful instruments like this cello, which, you know, at really great prices because some of it is used equipment. So it's a great place for new bands, people just trying to break in to go. But it's also a great place for professionals because they have super – uh, vintage Strat- Fender Stratocasters from the early 60s and, you know, incredible Les Paul customs from the 70s. The kind of thing that we're not Robert, but Jimmy Page. Jimmy we, Page, we, Robert Page, Jimmy Hendrix. Night, Jeff. <laughs> we had Art Walk Night and my friend Sid had his oh, band that's play. Fantastic. Hey, I want to I want to talk to you about something that kind of brings the Renaissance man together here on the show. Um, you know, I know there's been a lot of protests, as there have been here and across the country, a ceasefire on, in Gaza. 
I also want to want to talk about locally because there's been a lot of people who are trying to save more uh, local music clubs too. And what I get to, we just have brought back Theo Epstein to get the Red Sox, the guy that led him to a couple of championships. And the reason I bring these all together, sports, music, and 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 the world, world war and peace, is that public pressure, uh, however it's done locally, and you know, and saving the, the show box as you guys did a couple of years ago in Seattle, to what is nationally, internationally critically important if we want to have peace in the Middle East, peace on in Gaza for the ceasefire. The pressure of people in the streets have have really pushed, um, you know, President, as you said on your Twitter, at Mark Taylor Canfield and MTC on Twitter, slash X, Elon's new name. Um, give me a break. Um, the it's fact is, is that... People argue over yeah. that, but let me point something out. It's still called Twitter.com. So you can call it whatever you want, but the URL is Twitter. Sorry, right. Elon. Yeah, well, no, so I mean, what I'm th- what I what I'm thinking here is that peaceful pressure. That's why I say at the end of the show, keep on fighting peacefully, because if you keep on fighting, you're going to get it. You know, Biden did the right thing, as you pointed out on Twitter, that uh, you know he uh, they they're going to uh, put sanctions against the the settlers, which, as our good friend Lawrence Wilkerson told us a few months ago, what they're doing in the West Bank is similar to what uh, American and colonists did to Native Americans or what they would call back then Indians, or or they would even call them worse. And, you know, and this is the same thing that's happening in 2024. So, you know, and it's, it's obviously they want to bulldoze in the Gaza and keep it in, you know, in Israel territory and so on and so forth, as opposed to a two-state solution. So all of this, but I, I think you see it both in the musical world, you see it in the in the protest in Seattle over the years, and it and it changes things. I think you're a witness yeah, to that, I mean, right, Mark? Yeah, I'm, I need to write about the, the World Trade Organization protests here more. I've done quite a few articles, but it may be time for part of a book or something devoted to that, because that was amazing. The Black Lives Matter protests here, the Occupy mm-hmm. movement, these have been historic movements that were very, very strong in Seattle, the civil rights movement as well. Dr. King actually was here during the custodial strike here. So it's been very important part of Seattle history. You know, unfortunately, the police love the tear gas or the love gas, as we call it. They love the smell of tear gas and the taste of pepper spray. That's from my song battle in Seattle. But, uh, you know, we do get That's things done. Line. We saved the show box. We saved one of the most uh, iconic West Coast uh, music venues, the show box theater here, with the help of Eddie Vedder and other folks like that who signed on, you know, over 150 artists and bands around the country that signed on to a petition to save it. We need to do that with the trading musician. I'll tell you, I did perform my song in front of the city council about the trading musician. And we will be putting it up soon at YouTube on my uh, YouTube channel for the MTC report, but it's available at the Seattle channel. Seattle has an amazing government uh, uh, public uh, media system where, you know, it's not political, but they cover everything. It's like our C-SPAN and the Seattle channel guys, they do a great job, man. At that one meeting, that's where they had five cameras, you know, they're very professional, but that's a public service that the city does. You can see my, um, my, song there about saving the show box and i just can't say enough about this new study that the city of seattle came out with actually it's been a cute few years ago now it's by the ex office of economic development uh the arts and culture department uh seattle music and film department and it shows that the creative industries in this area of the country uh contribute billions of dollars to our local economy and it's the fastest uh area of job growth it much far outpaced uh, the general job growth in this area, especially with a lot of tech layoffs recently. Um, So, you know, kudos to all the musicians and theater owners and actors and musicians and, uh, you know, dancers and poets or, you know, painters. We went to some great galleries last night. My friend Jose Rodriguez Guerra is a world famous painter. I think they're going to devote a whole wing uh, in Mexico City at this museum to his work. He had a show last night. We've all you know, been trying to support the local arts here. And it also needs to happen on a national level. So there have been hunger strikes. There have been major, major protests. And, you know, basically what I've been talking about to you um, off the air and to other people is, you know, this is a very dangerous situation when you have uh, a president and a state department that have alienated a lot of the base of the Democratic Party, at least, you know, enough to to possibly swing the election if we're not careful. Uh, Some of these people might go to third parties. I want to get into that with you. Is it, is it, is it a situation where is it a fait accompli? 
um, you know, that, uh, that, you know, Biden is, is going to lose a whole slew of people or can he, which I'm hoping because, you know, we cannot afford to have a fascist in the white house and that would be the result. Um, but do you sense that, you know, if he comes out and says, we need a ceasefire, we need it now, I'm cutting off the monies to Mr. Netanyahu, but we're not going to continue to work with this guy who's ended up another fascist like Trump and we're just not going to do it. And, you know, it, it may cost him a little bit politically, but in the end, I think people are going to say, well, this guy cares about us. This guy understands us. And even if he's looking at it from a pure political perspective, which I think morally he's not, it's it's more than just, uh, you know, a, a calculation. But the calculation is your whole home state of Michigan is critical. You have the large Arab American population in Dearborn. You understand what's going on there. And to me, I'm just hoping that the people in Seattle, one of the most progressive cities in the country, if not the most progressive, you know, friends in San Francisco and, you know, other Madisons of the world will tell you differently. But the fact is, you know, it's right there. Um, I think that if he goes to, you know, each of these communities, even though Washington is, you know, considered a safe blue state, still talk to them and tell them, look, you know, we need we need you to to continue to push us as fdr always said make it you know let you know force me to make it happen and paraphrasing here and um i think that's that's a winner for him and i think if he doesn't do it you know it it, it could be a disaster so your thoughts on that when the people lead the leaders are, will yeah. follow when the people yeah. will lead, the leaders will follow, right? So there's obviously yeah. been pressure. Um, it's happened in the past. We saw it with Bernie Sanders on the same issue where a lot of his supporters, you know, started uh, pressuring him to speak more out, more uh, speak out more about Palestine. Well, here we go. Uh, Anthony Blinken, apparently it got, the story was broken by Axios. Uh, uh, Anthony Blinken asked some of the folks in the State Department to come up with some policies possibly you know he didn't make any official statement but to actually study the option of, a, Palestine. of an independent state so and the fact that then within a day of that within 24 hours uh joe biden uh, our current president was out there talking about p potential um, sanctions because of what the israeli settlers are doing in gaza the, that is as a journalist that's like oh i put my finger to the wind what do i oh it's moving in this direction now that means that they are making political decisions as well as hopefully statesman like music uh uh decisions that will actually help the world and help this country I hope it's not just political jeff but some of it is they need to keep people in the democratic party they need to keep uh, people from voting for third party candidates because they're so mad at at Biden over his uh, unabashed support of, of Israel. I mean, you can gain some of those people back when it comes down to it. If you're looking at uh, a right wing authoritarian, uh, corrupt authoritarian like Donald Trump versus uh, a wishy washy <laughs> Democrat who actually is starting to maybe question some of uh, the, the policies of the United States and our relationship with Israel. Well, that's that would be enough, I think, to move some people back into the party. And by the way, speaking of moving people, Eddie Vedder, where are you? We need your investment money. We need an yes. angel investor in Seattle. We need $2 million to buy the trading musician. Somebody's already offered, I think, $1.7 I can't get the actual facts from the real estate company because I'd have to find a, uh, sign a non-disclosure statement, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. But the rumors from some people I know who will remain anonymous is that it needs to be around $2 million. Brandy Carlisle, Dave Matthews. Uh, where are you guys? Come on, Ann Wilson. I know you've been out there touring, making a little bit of money. I know you yeah, got a lot Dave of royalties. Yeah, come back. Oh. You know, why might not? Macklemore. Yeah, I mean, where are you? Macklemore, you still Dave Grohl. Yeah. You know, Steve. Yeah, Look, the Foo Fighters. An opportunity Steve, here. You, yeah. The main campaign on the Stranger magazine of Dave Siegel, who's a great music writer in this town, breaks a lot of indie stories about indie bands and stuff. Dave Siegel wrote an article for the Stranger magazine, our, our alternative rag. And uh, he did a great job. And the first thing that he said at the end of his tweet, okay, are we calling it Xing now or tweeting? I don't know. But I got chewed out by some right winger for calling t Twitter X. So I'm writing an article at the Seattle Star about that, about why that's so stupid. But anyway, um, it's a, it's not a great name. Yeah, but uh, they get nothing else to do. They're still there. By the way, uh, speaking of your machine. world of music, the, the, the right wing is going apoplectic uh, regarding uh, Taylor. Uh, Swift. So I mean, you know, they're, they're, they say it is the most popular artist in the country right now. They're they're yes, swimming exactly. upstream a little bit. There, they're spitting in the wind. 
is going to come back on him because you know how many teenage girls are in love with Taylor you Swift? Should. Give me a break. Right. You're talking about taking on you know, like half the country. You know, more than half of this country is women. So watch out, Republicans. But in, in any that, case, those, those girls in a lot of cases have have fathers who are independent voters. And they're going to say, if you vote for this fascist, you know, I'm leaving home. So, you know, I mean, that may be the extreme. But that very, very well, that pressure is going to tell a lot of fathers that uh, you better wake up here, and not listen to these uh, right-wing claptrap uh, that we're hearing from, uh, you know, the former president's uh, advocates. Stupidity. As if, as if the Democrats wouldn't want, uh, uh, you know, a, a swing state of Detroit Lions in there as opposed to the fix. Kansas City Chiefs, you know, versus the very oh, progressive man. city of San Francisco. I mean, you know, don't it's get me, ridiculous. Yeah, don't get me started with, with the sports in Seattle, but I'll tell you, or you should maybe, but the thing is, is uh, I wanted to let you know that, one, there's a great pinball uh, game here in Seattle, one of my favorite places called Attaball, and it's the Foo Fighters pinball machine. And also the Stranger magazine, when they published Dave's uh, article the other day, their main campaign on social media is Foo Fighters, where are you? We need you to save the trading musicians. So they're making a direct plea to the band. I mean, and then we have the Melvins too, That's which a lot bad. of people around the country maybe aren't as familiar with, but you know, Buzz Osborne is a legend around here. He influenced all of the grunge bands and everything. He's still out there playing. He has this crazy hairdo still today. And if I walked into the trading musician and that was Buzz behind the counter, oh, you know, I would buy something. And I would ask him to autograph it too. So come on, Buzz. Come on, Melvins. Come on, Eddie and the guys. <laughs> I know you would do that. Well, Tim you know, Thales, I mean, there, there, should, there should be kind Harry of Cantrell a reunion. Step up. The community uh -oh. needs your help. Support. But you, we should well, talk about sports, you, maybe. Right, right, right. Look, this is 2024. And in 90, yeah, Old Navy. Uh, it's, 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 I've, I've had it in the, in, the, uh, in the closet for years. Um, so here is something. Oh, I you thought know, you were for the older Navy. Yeah, like, like Navy, Navy I'm, a, I'm for a peaceful Navy. You know, there's a blow okay. up in the any ships and stuff. But anyways, what I'm saying is that I believe it was, you know, in the early 90s, you know, culminating in 94 or so, which is now, you know, uh, 20 years ago uh, or 30 years ago, um, you had a, a situation where you had Nirvana. You had, uh, you know, before Cobain's death in 94, you had Soundgarden, you had uh, Foo Fighters, uh, which obviously would become afterwards. And, uh, and, and of course, Pearl Jam. So, you know, why not bring them all together? Have an anniversary. You, yeah. you can, you can uh, open up for them. By the way, um, our current great, great uh, artists in Seattle who are not getting as much uh, national attention because the major labels don't really care up here so much anymore, at least when it comes to rock, uh, the certain kind of rock that's happening right now. But the Black Tones, although they have gotten, mm. they broke national through NPR. Yeah. They've done a national... Uh, the, and Eva Walker has her own show on KBC or KEXP. Oh, I almost gave my old <laughs> radio station where I used to work as uh, uh, callers. But KEXP uh, is the greatest uh, public music radio station, I think, in the country. It was actually started with some seed funds by Paul Allen back in the day, the Microsoft co-founder. But it's a public station, so it, it survives on um, some subscribers. It's a great station. Eva has her own show on that station by the way, she's having a baby now, too. So I don't know how you juggle all this, but somehow wow. she does it. She's got a lot of energy. She's we also have uh, uh, Shana Shepard. Doing everything. Shana Shepard is one of the best vocalists in the country. If you go on any social media or go on SoundCloud or Spotify and you find Shana Shepard, listen to it. Her voice just soars up to heaven. It's incredible. She's an incredible person, too. She's a really beautiful, wonderful person. And then Aaron Jones, the guy who opened for the Rolling Stones with his band and also Guns N' Roses when they played here. Uh, he was with the Stones on a full Euro European tour. They love him. We love him. Aaron is great. He stepped on stage when I was jamming at the Nectar. I didn't even know it was him. And I hear this crazy, rad guitar coming from behind me. I turn around as Aaron Jones. He's that kind of guy. He'll just show up at the club, ask if he can jam with you. Uh, so we do have a great music scene here. Unfortunately, our our sports scene sucks because we lost. Well, coach, you know, you just coach. lost a great Pete Carroll, who, uh, yeah. you know, I interviewed about 25 well, we didn't years lose ago. him. You got sidelined. Well, I guess he's still there. He's been sidelined. The owner, pushed Paul out Allen, to get a new to Raven. on the one hand, he giveth and he taketh away. On the one hand, Paul Allen provides seed money for one of the greatest radio stations of all time. And then on the other hand, his his uh, inheritor, after he passed on, uh, his sister inherited the team. And she is, I mean, she was the one who said, I'm sorry, Pete, <laughs> you're going to have to step aside. And Pete was like, no, I'm not going. And the team was like, no, he's not going in. He said he argued 
uh, as long as he could. And he stood up for, you know, staying with the team, but she decided not to. I don't know whether they're going to make him a, some kind of general manager. What's going to happen? I hope he doesn't leave the organization. Maybe he'll go coach, coach somebody else. He's only 71, yeah. man. He's got at least, you know, 20 yeah, more he's years. 71 right? going on 51. I mean, the guy just runs yeah. 100 miles an hour. I mean, he looks like, you know. Yeah, he's, he's got he's, tons of energy. Great shape. We also lost Caleb DeBoer, right? He decided to go from number one Washington Huskies who are in the championship with Michigan this year. He went from there to number five, Alabama. Now, I understand Alabama yeah, has yeah, not good. I don't like him leaving they the Pacific to go down to Alabama. Racist. Yeah, we don't want to forget that Alabama also had a coach at one time. It was very racist and kind of a terrible. Very moment. racist. You got that yeah. right. Um, well, let me ask you this. Jeff? Bear Bryant. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. There was another guy there, too. Anyway. Okay. So we don't want to talk about that. But, um, yeah. And then, you know, I, and then the Michigan and then Harbaugh is leaving. So what what is going on? Like, you take your team all the way to the championship and then you say, see you later, fellas. That was a good well, ride. I mean, now it's about money. You know, the, 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 get the portal the and all that stuff. It's party. crazy. Or you stay with your team for the rest of your life. You know, you never leave Green Bay, which is a publicly owned team, by the way, right? Which that's Harvey right. K loves to play. If that's we had more Green Bays in sports, we would be in better shape. And again, that's the idea. A community makes the change, right? You know, finally, Aaron Rodgers finally get the heck out of town. It's a waste of space. And, uh, you know, in his anti-vaxxer viewpoints, him and Robert Kennedy should, uh, you know, have a party together. Uh, you know, him and you, you him have your own headaches in, in Boston sports, I know, so. You know, we have, yes, yes, we have. We, have, have uh, we finally got rid of Belichick, thank God. And, uh, you know, we got a new guy yeah. now in Mayo. We could have an African American quarterback ever. and an African American head coach, which should be, you know, for this area, you know, never happened before. So we shall see. Starting quarterback, they've been on that's about time. So, so Belichick is a great coach, though. Belichick is going to the Hall of Fame. You know that. Oh, well, no, no, He's a great no doubt. He was a great coach. But, with, you know, without Tom Brady, the both of them together. They would never have won six oh. Super Bowls. Let's just be real. You know, I mean, you know, great defensive mind, a great yeah. quarterback. That and you just mentioned the Super goat. Bowl. So as soon as you mentioned the, the goat, goat, like I hear the angels singing, "Whoa, Tom Brady! If we only had him <laughs> in our team, we could win this game." Where is he? We got thirty seconds yeah. left. He would have. No problem. I can tell you one thing: he wouldn't have thrown the ball. You know, from the three yard line, he would have given it to Lynch and let him score. You know, I mean, I, you know, I know, I know. You don't want to go there. That's bad, bad memories. Well, Russell that Wilson is, is uh, you know, I don't know where he's going to be. We next, still have uh, post-traumatic stress for, over, yeah, that play is famous. <laughs> My friends still talk about it. I'm like, I don't want to hear it, okay? Sometimes people make, yeah. you know, I saw Russell Wilson do that a few times, too, where he's right next to the goal. He goes, nah, let me throw it, coach, and then interception, fumble, whatever. I mean, you know, sometimes you're just a little bit overly um, – zealous and arrogant you know in the way you want to win a game you know when you should just go ground chuck remember when we had chuck Knox, he just ran the ball oh, yeah, ground the chuck. ran the ball right yeah. down you know and he took of, us to the big uh, game yards so of was, yeah run, 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 i want to ask yeah. you we've only got about a minute left here uh do you ever think the sonics or basketball will return to seattle nba you know, I haven't heard any recent rumors, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there's a big demand for well, that. Well, you got the arena now. Really love the hockey team now. The, the Kraken is so popular. Maybe Kraken. people would go to hockey I instead. I don't know. Yeah, well, great to see you, Jeff. You great to be on your show. Hey, great to see you, man. Have yourself a fantastic weekend. Again, follow you on YouTube. Uh, you are the best, my man. We'll talk to you uh, hopefully next week. All the best, man. See you later. Hey, I want to thank Josh for producing this broadcast. And uh, thank you all for listening this week. We're back on Monday. Carol Myerson, maybe. Getting better. Keep on fighting peacefully, folks. Have a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos, and I got to go.